we are live. You already know who it is. My name is Mike Kyle, aka the Fantasy Vulture. I have over a decade worth of fantasy football experience and have continuously competed for fantasy championships over the course of the past six seasons. Let's make it seven in 2020. But enough of me. I'm here for you. On today's episode of the FB Show, we are going to go right into our Week 12 game recaps, breaking down every single Week 12 matchup all through the lens of fantasy football. So if you're excited for this video, be sure to hit that like button down below like an open receiver downfield. Also, smash that subscribe button like a power running back up the middle so you never miss a video from me. And last but not least, you can follow me on all social media platforms at FFVulture. The content I am going to be producing on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok over the course of the next five weeks is going to be astronomical, and I'm so excited to share what I have in store for all of you guys as we approach the playoffs and, of course, championship season, which I hope as many of you win championships this year as physically possible. But let's dive right into week 12. This was a fun game because the Jaguars gave the Browns a game. Ultimately though, Cleveland came away with a victory defeating Jacksonville by a final score of 27 to 25. The Browns are 8 and 3 and the Jags are 1 and 10. Jacksonville fired GM David Caldwell after this game. Baker Mayfield for the Browns was 19 of 29 for 258 passing yards and two touchdowns. Nick Chubb, 19 carries, caught all three of his targets for 176 total yards and a score. Jarvis Landry on his birthday comes through in a monster way for your team. 11 targets, 8 receptions, 143 yards and a touchdown. And Austin Hooper caught both of his targets for 13 yards, but got into the end zone. So if you started Hooper, this was a great game to do so. Nick Chubb is also averaging over 100 rushing yards per game. On the other side for the Jags, Mike Lennon gets his first start since, I think, 2018. 20 completions, 35 attempts, 235 passing yards, two touchdowns. James Robinson, you know the story here. 22 carries. Caught five of six targets for 159 yards and a score. And Colin Johnson, rookie out of Texas, eight targets, four receptions for 96 yards and a score. DJ Chark did not play in this game due to that rib injury. All right, a few things I want to talk about here. Honestly, this might be one of my shortest recaps because just things are so pretty standard here. Uh, what Jarvis Landry did is not entirely surprising. I know I backed off of uh, Jarvis and uh, Austin Hooper this game, uh, but there was somebody who actually tweeted me this morning, hey, would you start Juju or Jarvis? I did say Jarvis just because I like the matchup uh, versus Jacksonville just a little bit more, and I'm very unsure about what happens on Tuesday night. But Jarvis comes through, finally comes through with a ton of targets. The receptions were there. The yardage and the score doesn't, and the score helps too. You look at the Browns' rest of season schedule with Tennessee, Baltimore, the Giants, and the Jets in weeks 15 and 16. Uh, there is a potential for Jarvis Landry to be viable. If you still have him, I may hold him. And if he is on your waiver wire, uh, just keep that watchful eye out. Because I feel like after this game, he might get looked at just a little bit. So you may have to actually spend up to get him. But if he slides through your waiver wire cracks, just consider the fact that in 15 and 16, it is the Jets and the Giants. And those are two good matchups for the Browns. Nick Chubb's incredible. Um, this backfield with Kareem Hunt and Chubb is incredible. And I don't know what else to say besides the fact if you look at Nick Chubb's rushing numbers. Uh, 60 yards, 120, 100, 43, 120, 114, 144. I mean, Nick Chubb really is one of the best running backs. Maybe the most underrated running back in the NFL. Uh, Kareem Hunt just didn't get it done because he didn't have to. Right, so there was a bus game here from Kareem Hunt, all things considered. But this was the Nick Chubb show uh, at the end of the day with the usage he was getting. And again, Kareem Hunt just really is the pass catching back. And because the Browns were pretty much leading all game long, there was no need uh, to utilize Hunt in those situations. Moving over to the Jags real quick. Mike Lennon showed some level of competence, which was nice. Obviously, 20 of 35 isn't great. Uh, but that 235 passing yards, is we, we kind of like that. And there is potential for that to go up as time progresses. Uh, we may even see Gardner Minshew back in action for Jacksonville next week. And that's something that I'm actually really keeping an eye on. 
Their schedule isn't great in the playoffs. You look at Baltimore, Chicago, and Indy, 15 through 17. So there's no way in hell I'm going to play anybody outside of James Robinson in those matchups. But before that, in week 12 and 14, it's Minnesota and Tennessee. And in that, if that is the case, Gardner Minshew may be a viable streaming option for you in those games. James Robinson is fucking incredible. Uh, but I do want to spend a quick moment and talk about a tweet that I saw earlier today. Fantasy Pros tweeted out, In a redraft league, does James Robinson go in the top six? And I thought about that, and I'm like, what are we fucking doing here? James Robinson is great. I'm not saying he's not. I've praised James Robinson since the time he stepped on the field this year. But, oh my God, to consider James Robinson as a top six running back What is he right now? I'm I'm, I'm very curious because I believe, yes, so he's running back six in standard, running back five in PPR. He's running back five in PPR with Christian McCaffrey missing multiple games, with Austin Eckler missing multiple games. Um, Who else has been hurt? Uh, Zeke Elliott on an absolute downslide, right? Six is just too high. Six is way too high. I'm taking, it's Cook. Cook, CMC, Henry, Zeke, Kamara. That's five right there. With the way that Antonio Gibson is playing, that might make six. And then from there, you kind of get in that range of Swift, Mixon, Drake, Sanders, Eckler, Jacobs. And where do you slide James Robinson into that? Probably towards the end of that list. So I got James Robinson around RB10 if we're talking about early projections for next season. Uh, But... Top six is blatantly absurd. Blatantly absurd, uh, all things considered. I love you, J-Rob, especially for pretty much the rest of this season. Uh, But next year, let's uh, pump the brakes just a little bit. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button down below, like an open receiver downfield. Also, smash that subscribe button like a power running back up the middle so you never miss a video from me. Last but not least, you can follow me on all social media platforms at FFVulture. Again, the content that is going to be coming out is insane i'm so excited to show you guys what i have in store and last but not least remember people come and go but fantasy championships are forever and i will see you in the next video